This is the new Toyota Land Cruiser and it's a little bit like a total solar eclipse. You see, they don't happen very often. The last time Toyota fully updated the Land Cruiser was back in 2007. In this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about this SUV. I'm going to take it for a drive as well. And of course, I'm going to launch it to see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour because I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, car, wow. Even though this is a new Land Cruiser, it's very recognizable as a Land Cruiser. And this being the GI has the GR Sport badging, so it's not a full on GR product, it's like BMW's M Lite, like an M340i is to an M3. Anyhow, the GR gets some sportier rear bumpers like this with this chromey effect down here. As you move around the side, you also get unique alloy wheels on the GR Sport. These are 18s and they're in black. Now, wheel sizes actually go up to 20 inches. The GR Sport also has this like sticker stripe down the side contrasting black bits up here moving down here you've also got your GR badge just like on a GR Yaris at the front yeah it's all very Land Cruiser -y again huge grill which is slightly different on the GR and you've got the GR badging plus slightly different design for the lower part of the bumper as well compared to the standard Land Cruiser so the standard car starts from 52,000 pounds and this GR Sport top of the range model it's 90,000 pounds though it's a bit irrelevant because you can't buy them in the UK this new Land Cruiser is way more modern here on the inside compared to its predecessor. But you've still got some big chunky buttons to actually operate the infotainment system. You've got big chunky buttons again for the climate control, which is handy, it means that you can actually operate them if you're wearing gloves, because these are supposed to be vehicles used throughout the world in all conditions. In terms of the design, it's fairly interesting in a Toyota sort of way. And by that, I mean, it doesn't look as cool as a Land Rover Defender's interior. But you know, you've got leather out here on the dash of this particular GR version. We've got this interesting trim here. I don't know what it is, but it, it's, it's fine. We've got squidgy materials on the dash once again with leatherette, leatherette down here. And of course, being a Toyota, my God, it all feels super solid. Look at that. And this being the GR version, we have GR here on the seat, so a bit sporty. And you've got a GR Sport steering wheel. You've got the GR logo on the start stop button as well. It's all quite nice, I think. And look, there's plenty of adjustment in these electric seats. Oh, it's beeping, it's beeping, it's beeping. It's a Toyota, so it, it just beeps a lot. And there's a decent amount of adjustment in the steering wheel, which is electric, electric, come to me, electric steering wheel. Yeah, so that does give it an air of premium. And we're going to be trying to keep this vehicle in premium condition because it's been lent to us by Alpha Tame Toyota in Dubai. Hence why we still have the wrappers here on the infotainment screen, but it does still let you operate it, look. And to be fair, the infotainment system is just like another Toyota, so it's very average. Still, you've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You've also got a digital screen here between the analog dials. How old fashioned is that? So what's not old fashioned? Look, you've got USB-C port there, though there is an old fashioned USB normal port there as well. We've got JBL stereo on this particular car with look, space for a CD. Really? C CD? Under here is your glove box, which seems to be filled with all the manuals. There are a lot of manuals in this car and they take up all the space. So maybe you want to throw those away when you buy the car. Door bins. They are a decent size, but they are quite low down. They will fit a big bottle, but not that comfortably, though you can keep a big bottle up here. The huge cup holders. Oh, it's also huge, the knob. Look, it's huge, the gear, gear lever, gear knob. That's what we call it in the UK. And look, you've got some buttons here for your high range four wheel drive mode or your low range mode. And there's your drive select modes there as well. I've actually been trying to start the car by pressing this quite a few times. Yeah, I suppose after a while you get the muscle memory to actually start it up there, but that just that just calls to me. Here in the back, there's loads of headroom. Knee room's good as well. This car is fitted with the rear infotainment system, so you've got these huge screens, which once again are covered in protective plastic. You can recline the seats quite away. Look at that, very comfortable. However, you can't slide the bench forwards and backwards like you can in an Audi Q7. However, what is good about the Land Cruiser is that because it's so wide, carrying through in the back isn't a problem at all because there's so much shoulder room. One minor issue is that there's this big hump in the floor that the middle passenger has to put their feet on and then they don't have much under thigh support, which is a bit of a shame. Not gonna complain about this though. The armrest has its cup holders hidden until you use them. Speaking of which, door bins are big enough for large bottles. You have some big posh airplane style folders on the seat backs. You've also got dual zone climate control here in the middle row. So both our passengers can set their temperature. There's two USB-C ports here, 12 volt 
and HDMI input obviously for those two screens. Oh, we've also got heated and ventilated seats back here. Yeah, very premium. However, if you're carrying babies, look, you have ice fix zone points here, which are easy to get to. So it should be easy to mount a child seat here in the back. And I think you could fit two child seats here and still fit someone in this middle seat. Perfect. Actually, if you need to carry more people, then there's always the third row. Now, I'm going to jump into the rear side, just pull this lever here, that'll flop down. These go forward. And then, if I clamber in, it, 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 oh, here we go. Let's pull this into position and have it like someone would sit there. Knee room, absolutely fine. Head room, a little bit on the tight side. These seats are also very low to the floor, so there's no under thigh support, but there's a decent distance from the other seat next to you, and they are quite wide, so it's not too bad. I've got a button here which seems to alter the actual backrest. Moves it forwards and backwards slightly. A bit more upright, a bit more reclined. That's obviously so you can just increase the boot size. What else have we got back here? We've got USBs, and there's ventilation here as well which you're going to kind of need. Oh, windows are a decent size. It's okay here in the back. I don't mind it. So this new Land Cruiser is good for carrying people. What's it like for carrying their stuff? The boot capacity of the Land Cruiser is 175 litres with all seven seats in place, which is about half that of a BMW X7 with its seven seats in place. However, when you fold this third row down in the Land Cruiser, the boot capacity is then about 40% bigger than a BMW X7. You've got a thousand litres of space. Look, it's massive. Go on, fold down. It's not the quickest. We'll just bear with it for a moment. Look at this huge space. No load lip either to lift stuff over. Absolutely massive. But if you need more room, then you can fold down those seats. But I'm gonna have to go around to do it. Here we go. Come on, come on. Uh, uh. Then I'm gonna go around the other side as well. Uh, now it's like a van, right? Look. Total hugeness. One slight problem though is there's a bit of a dip in the floor there and yeah, that's, that's a bit annoying. In fact, that brings me on to five annoying things about the Land Cruiser. You can't get a full length sunroof like on many other SUVs. It's quite small in size. Oh, and the blind is manual. Compared to SUVs from the Germans, the reversing camera on this Toyota is pretty low definition. For some reason, there's a huge gap between these two seats. Look at this. <laughs> I'm sure they could have fit them a bit closer together. You can't open the fuel cover, even if the car's unlocked, but you can on most other cars. You have to go inside and release it from here. Right, there we go, look. Yeah. Why did Toyota do that? Unlike with other Toyotas, even including the entry-level Yaris, the Land Cruiser doesn't get adaptive cruise as standard. Why not? It still beeps like all of the Toyotas are standard, though. It's not all negative, though. Here's five good things about this car. There's grab handles for each door to assist you when you're clambering in and out. Oh, that was easy. You can start the Land Cruiser's engine remotely so that you can preheat it or pre-cool it ready for when you want to go drive. This Land Cruiser is a proper hardcore off-roader. It's got a ladder frame chassis, a rigid rear axle. There's a low range mode to the gearbox. You've also got lockable differentials. This thing can go anywhere and it will be reliable as well because it's a Toyota. There's a fridge underneath here and you can open it either way. Look, you can even open it from the back. The Land Cruiser has something called turn assist. When you're making low speed, tight turns, the car will automatically brake the inside rear wheel to help you rotate. The engine lineup for the Toyota Land Cruiser is very simple. There's a four litre naturally aspirated V6 with 275 horsepower. This 3.5 litre twin turbo V6 with 415 horsepower or a 3.3 litre turbo diesel with 313 horsepower. All models have a 10 speed automatic gearbox and all wheel drive. Okay, so what's this GR Land Cruiser like to drive? Well, I've got to tell you, it's a lot more relaxing than any other GR product I've driven to date, and definitely 
a lot more relaxing than my little GR Yaris. You know, I've got the adaptive suspension set in its comfiest setting. I do have the engine and gearbox in sporty mode though, just so you can respond if I need it to. But for just pottering around like this, it's actually very, very nice. Considering it's based on a ladder frame chassis and we've got a rigid axle at the rear, and you know, independent front suspension, it actually deals with bumps quite well. Part of the reason for that could be the anti-roll bars, which can decouple when you're just going straight so that the wheels can travel a bit more freely. That's also good when you're going off-road as well. Though when you go around a corner, they will stiffen up to hold the car nice and flat. I say car, I mean SUV. And it's a proper SUV. No, this is a genuine off-roader. Yeah, to just drive around, it's fairly easy. You do feel a bit of shimmy over these little rumble strips here but you would in any car. It actually soaks up the bumps very well. The brakes do require a bit of a prod though. Oh, hello. I don't know what you've got there, Nissan Patrol. Yeah, very popular in Dubai, Nissan Patrol. One of the other great things about the Land Cruiser is that when you're just driving normally and you've got it in its comfort setting, the steering is fairly light. Visibility is good as well. You see it up high, good view over that bonnet, good view at the back window, big side windows. It's easy, and this 10-speed automatic gearbox just blends the gears when you're just cruising about. Such an easy thing to daily this, and you know, being a Toyota, it's not gonna break down. It's not. When you're going at faster speeds, it's a relaxing vehicle. Seats are comfy, there is a bit of wind noise from those huge door mirrors. There's not much tire noise though, however, that could be due to the fact that the roads in Dubai here are just so smooth. I can't believe how smooth they are. Yeah, it's all fairly relaxing. But if you need to overtake, Wait for a second for the gearbox to kick down and then, yeah, off you go. Now this bit the point of the video where I'd like to try this car out on a twisty road, but there really aren't many twisty roads. You have exits from motorways and roundabouts, but that's about it. I will put this GR into Sport Plus mode, which will stiffen everything up. And let's find a roundabout to go round and round and round and round and round and round and roundabout. Okay, so here we are, extensive handling test coming up right now. And the car in front, which is our camera car, is a GAC GS8. And I'm right up his bottom. I can go way quicker around here than he can. Come on. Actually, do you know what? I'll go around the outside. There we are. Look, he's going as fast as he can and I can go faster around the outside. So for a Land Cruiser, it's all right. For a normal GR product, not so much. <laughs> it's still definitely more Land Cruiser than GR. Right, that's enough of that. The last thing for me to do is to launch this GR Sport Land Cruiser. It's supposed to do 0 to 60 miles an hour in 6.7 seconds, but I'm gonna find out the reality with my specialist timing gear up here. Let's do it. Oh, pickup is good. What are we getting? That's 0 to 60 in 6.3 seconds. Oh, that's a lane departure warning going crazy. Oh no, it's a speed limiter warning. Okay, what's the quarter mile? There we go. Uh, it's got on the brakes. 14.72 seconds for the quarter mile, which is pretty good for a big, capable off-roader. So then, what's my final verdict on the new Toyota Land Cruiser? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, if it's on sale in your country, then I reckon you should shortlist it. It might not be the most luxurious feeling SUV, but it's brilliant off-road. And if you ask the guys here in Dubai, which they'd rather take out into the desert, this Toyota or something from Land Rover, they'll be taking this.